Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Storytime Jam. My name is Miss Ashley. I'm a librarian with the San Mateo County Libraries. You may have seen me at the Pacifica Libraries if you've been there. And this is my friend Komodo. She is a bearded dragon. I've shown her here once before, but I thought I'd bring her back because she's so sweet. She is a kind of a lizard, she has a long tail. She does not breathe fire, but she does have a long tongue. Like, can you stick out your tongue? Blech. And when she sees something she wants to eat, like a cricket, she goes, Do you want to try that? She's wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> you see her looking at you? She has lots of spikes all down her side here, but they're not sharp. You'd think they'd be sharp, but they actually feel like rubber. She's very soft and she has very soft scales under her chin, which is where they get the name Bearded Dragon. So she comes from Australia, or her type of lizard is from Australia. And there she is. You say bye, Komodo. I'm going to hand her off so she can go back in her aquarium where it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's time for us to get started. But before we do our first song, if you could take a minute to gather up some supplies. If you've been with me before, you may already have them with you. But if not, go find some kind of a piece of cloth. It could be, uh, this is a cloth napkin or a blanket or a washcloth uh, or even a sock, as long as it's clean. Um, something you can throw up in the air, put on your head. So we're going to do some fun things with that in just a little bit for our scarf songs. Usually we would hand out these silky colorful scarves, but we have to make do since we're at home. And also, if you can go find something for our instrument play along, go find an instrument. Now it doesn't have to be a fancy instrument like a trumpet or a piano. Something around your house that makes noise. There's so many things you can use. Uh, one of my favorites is some paper cups, because they can clack together, they can be a drum, or something that shakes, like the salt container, which is also a drum, or a cereal box, uh, pots and pans, keys. Use your imagination. Play around with different things in your house that might make noise. And we will do that at the very end. In the meantime, it's time for our first song, which is called We Bounce and We Bounce and We Stop. And I love this song because it's a good song for listening. It's a little bit like a freeze song, but also because you can take this song and add in whatever kinds of motions you like to do. You could try it out on your family and see if they stop in time. Here we go. We bounce, we bounce, we stop. Did you get the stop? We bounce, we bounce, we stop. Good job. We bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we stop. Did you get all of those? Let's try bouncing even higher this time. See how high you can bounce. We bounce, we bounce, we stop. Whoa! We bounce, we bounce, we stop. We bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we bounce, we stop. What a good bouncing. And now let's wiggle. Can you wiggle? We wiggle and we wiggle and we stop. We wiggle and we wiggle and we stop. We wiggle and 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 we stop. Good job. Now I showed you Komodo, my bearded dragon. Bearded dragons live in the desert where it's very hot and they sit very still. But when they run, they just suddenly run really, really fast. So let's run in place as if we were a lizard running really, really fast. We run and we run and we stop. Did you get it? We run and we run and we stop. We run and 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 we stop. Good job. And now let's tickle yourself or your grown up. We tickle and we tickle and we stop. We tickle and we tickle and we stop. We tickle and 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 we stop. Now let's hug. You can hug yourself or your blankie stuffed animal, your grown up, 
We hug and we hug and we stop. We hug and we hug and we stop. We hug and 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 we stop. And now let's bounce one more time. Are you ready? We bounce and we bounce and we stop. We bounce and we bounce and we stop. We bounce and 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 we stop. Good listening. Okay, well, today I'm going to read stories about things that you might see or hear at nighttime. So let's start with a song that you probably know called Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. So I'll do the motions with you the first time, and then the second time I'll play the ukulele and you can do the motions by yourself. Here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Good job! You can also do your twinkles like this. You can do your motions however you like. I'm gonna play my ukulele and we'll sing it again. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you job. Let's do it one more time. What I like to do when I visit preschools is sing it really fast. Let's see how fast we can go. Are you ready? That's exhausting. Okay, well it's time for our first book, which is about an animal that you might hear outside at night. I have two of them close to my house, I know, because I hear them at night in the yard, and they sound like this, hoo, hoo, hoo. Have you ever heard anything like that? Do you know what it is? Let's see if it's what you think it is. This is a really cute book called Hoot and Peep by Lita Judge. And did you guess that they were owls? Because you're right. This book is published by Dial Books, and you can check this book out from Overdrive on smcl.org, one of our ebook collections. Hoot and Peep. Aren't they cute? Here's Peep. She's the little one, and Hoot is her big brother. Peep was finally old enough to join her big brother Hoot on the rooftops. It's the perfect night to teach peeps all my hourly wisdom, thought Hoot. Peep thought it was the perfect night to sing about the magic of the moonbeams. Shweep, she peeped. That's fun to say, can you say that? Shweep. No, 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 it goes like this peeps first. We are owls. We say, who. Second, we always say, who. Lastly, we only say, who. There, he was done imparting all his owly wisdom. Oh, here's Peep. She says, shweep de peep. Can you say that? Shweep. Listen to me, peeps. I'm older. I know more. We owls simply say, who? Bon? Who? Shweepity peep, go! Ding dong, bong! 
Oh dear, she's not saying who at all. Who, who, who? Who means hello, goodbye, good morning, and good night. Who is the only way to say everything? Hoot forgot owls never shout. Peep had nothing to say and just flew away. And you fly away. The problem with Peep, thought Hoot, is she won't listen to my owly wisdom. The problem with Hoot, thought Peep, is he doesn't believe in singing about the mystery of things. Peep believed in whispering to an ancient wind. Shweep, dingity dong, shweep, dingity dong. And singing with the slip slap of waves against stone. Slippity slap, slippity slap. See the water down here? Hoot knew he was right. That is, until he started missing Peep's songs. Without Peep to listen, there didn't seem to be a point in saying who anymore. Dingity dong, slippity slap, slippity slap. Peep's having a good time, but here comes Hoot. Then Hoot heard Peep's sweet voice drifting on the wind. The sound was like magic. Sweet Hoot realized he'd made a big mistake. Little sisters have their own owly wisdom. Can you teach me your song, Peep? Ding -dee. Dong. Hey, they're both singing. Soon the night wind rang with songs of joy and love and magic things. Slippity slap, shweepity coo. Uh, Hoot and Peep sang together, but each in their very own owly way. Dingity dong, bong! And that, they thought, was why it was a perfect night. There they go. That's Hoot and Peep. That book had lots of fun sounds in it. I love to play around with funny sounds, don't you? And that is why we're going to do our first scarf song, which is called The Wishy Washy Washer Woman. So you got your scarf. We've done this one before. But if you haven't done it before, the Wishy Washy Washer Woman washes her scarves like this. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. You got it? Here we go. Way down in the valley where nobody goes, there's a wishy washy washer woman washing her clothes. She goes, ooh. Ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And that's how the wishy washy washer woman washes her clothes. Now let's do it again. Now she's going to dry her clothes like this. Way down in the valley where nobody goes, there's a wishy washy washer woman drying her clothes. She goes, And that's how the wishy-washy washer woman dries her clothes. Now she's gonna fold her clothes like this. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Way down in the valley where nobody goes, there's a wishy-washy washer woman folding her clothes. She goes, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And that's how the wishy-washy washer woman folds her clothes. Now she's gonna wear her clothes like this. Way down in the valley where nobody goes, there's a wishy washy washer woman wearing her clothes. She goes, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And that's how the wishy washy washer woman wears her clothes. Yay! Okay, let's use our scarves for another song where we get to wear our scarf for a class. We're going to be Little Bo Peep. She has her little scarf around her head like this. And the scarf is also going to be a sheep. So we're going to hide the sheep away. And then we're going to find it. And then we're going to wag our tails and say, bah. Can you try that? Bah. Here we go. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Can you hide your sheep? 
leave them alone and they'll come home back <laughs> wagging their tails behind them can you wag your tail and say bah! there we go let's do it again you can hide your sheep in a different place little bo peep has lost her sheep <gasps> and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home. Ah! Wagging their tails behind them. Can we do it one more time? Got your sh sheep herder scarf on. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home back wagging their tails behind them back and that little bo peep okay it's time for our next book which is about something else you might see at night it's called moon game this is by frank ash and it's published by Aladdin Books. And this is also from Overdrive on smcl.org. This book is about Bear and Little Bird, and they're in a lot of other books like Mooncake and Happy Birthday Moon. Lots of books about the moon. And Bear in the story is gonna play hide and seek. Have you ever played hide and seek? It's where one person hides and the other person counts and then they try to find the person who's hiding. Well, that's what's going to happen in this story. Moon game. There's the moon. One day, Little Bird showed Bear a new game, hide and seek. First, he told Bear to hide and count it to ten. Let's count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, ten. Then he went looking for bear. If you see me doing this, this is the sign for bear in sign language, and this is the sign for bird. I found you, chirped little bird when he found bear hiding behind some bushes. Now it's your turn to find me. All day long until the sun went down, bear and little bird played their new game. That night, when Bear was all alone, he looked up in the sky and said to the moon, Let's play hide and seek. First, I'll hide and you'll find me. Then Bear ran as fast as he could until he came to an old hollow tree. Climbing inside, he ducked down so the moon couldn't see him. See his ear there? Bear waited for a while, then he poked his head up. When he did, the moon was right there, looking down at him. Okay, said Bear, you found me. Now it's your turn to hide. Closing his eyes, Bear began to count just as Little Bird had shown him. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At that moment, a gentle breeze, can you make a breeze? slowly hid the moon behind a big cloud. Can you hide behind your scarf? <gasps> Peek -a -boo. You can see the moon just barely sticking out from behind the cloud. When Bear finished counting, he set out to find the moon. First, he thought he found the moon hiding behind some rocks. Is that it? Nope, that's a flower. Then he thought he saw, found the moon hiding in someone's house. Oh no, not some cheese. When Bear thought he found the moon hiding in a tree, he shook the tree, he shake the tree, and cried, I found you, moon! But Bear was mistaken. All he found was a big balloon. Then Little Bird came by to visit. Will you help me find the moon, asked Bear. Sure, I'll help, chirped Little Bird. Bear and Little Bird looked and looked, but they couldn't find the moon. They're just looking in this bush and the chimney and around the corner and even in the trash can. Do you think the moon's hiding in the trash can? So they went to the forest to ask for help. 
I think the moon is lost, explained Bear. Can you help me find him? Don't worry, we'll help you, replied the animals in the forest. We have a deer and a skunk and a raccoon and a duck, a turtle, all kinds of animals are going to help. Together they searched and searched, but they couldn't find the moon. Look, Bear has a torch. And this little guy, I think he's an otter maybe, he's got a magnifying glass. At last, Bear sat down and sighed. The moon is lost and it's all my fault. Then Bear got an idea. He jumped up and cried, okay, moon, I give up. You win. Just then the breeze began to blow again. Can you make the breeze blow? And the moon came out of its hiding place. Can you hide and then come out? <gasps> Peekaboo, here's the moon came out from behind the cloud. Look, chirped little bird, the moon wasn't lost. He was just hiding behind that big cloud. Bear was so happy, he danced and danced. Then everyone played hide and seek. Hide and seek is a really fun game to play with your family or your friends if you have a chance to do that. Okay, well, it's time for our play along. For our play along song, we're going to do a song about the man in the moon. This is an old Scottish song called Aiken Drum. It's about the man who lives in the moon, and there's a part that repeats that goes, and he played upon a ladle, and a ladle's like a big spoon they use for scooping soup. Now the fun thing about the song is that the man in the moon is made up of lots of silly things. We're going to make him out of food today, and you can play along with your instruments, whatever you found around your house. Just shake or bang on. It goes like this. There was a man lived in the moon, lived in the moon, lived in the moon. There was a man lived in the moon, and his name was Aiken Drum. And he played upon a ladle, a ladle, a ladle. He played upon a ladle, and his name was Aiken Drum. Now his eyes are made of, what do you think these are? Lemons. He's got lemon eyes. And his eyes were made of lemons, of lemons, of lemons. His eyes were made of lemons, and his name was Aiken Drum. And he played upon a ladle, a ladle, a ladle. He played upon a ladle, and his name was Aiken Drum. Now his nose was made of an orange. He has a big orange nose. And his nose was made of orange, of orange, of orange. His nose was made of orange, and his name was Aiken Dump. And he played upon a ladle, a ladle, a ladle. He played upon a ladle, and his name was Aiken Dump. What do you think his mouth was made of, though? What's that kind of a fruit that looks like a mouth, maybe? Let's see if you guessed it. It's a banana. Do you like to have a banana mouth? I think it's appealing. Ha ha. <laughs> and his mouth is a banana, banana. anything you can find around the house or anything in your imagination. Okay, before we go, before we do our last song, I always like to leave you with a little activity you can do at home. And this is one of my favorite ones. It's called a crayon resist, which sounds complicated, but it really isn't. Uh, all you need is a crayon, and the best kind of crayon is a white crayon. That's when it really works, really seems magical. And if you have watercolor paints, that's really 
the most fun for this, but not everybody has watercolor paints laying around the house. So you can use a marker or you can even make your own kind of paint if you have food coloring or some other kind of like you can even use some spices and mix them with a little bit of water and even some cornstarch if you have it. But all you do for this is you draw something with your crayon. I'm going to draw a couple of stars and a moon. So I have colored them here on my paper, but you cannot see them because they're white. They're with my white crayon on a white paper. But when I rub my marker over that, let's see what happens. Sometimes it's hard to see where you drew even. Let's see if I can get it to show up. I'm coloring with my marker. And hopefully, if I get it right, there it is. It's kind of like magic what happens. Can you see my little moon here? It just barely shows up. It works really well, especially if you have some, um, some watercolor paint. You can see my little stars showing through here. It's very faint on here, but hopefully you can see it. That's a really fun thing you can do. You can draw whatever you want. with. You can use a color crayon too, but it's really magical when you use a white one because it just appears out of nowhere. It's kind of like stars appearing in the night sky. This is why I chose that activity. Okay, it's time for our last song though, which as always is Freight Train, written by Elizabeth Cotton. And the version that we're singing is the kids version that was written by Elizabeth Mitchell. We can take our imaginary train anywhere in the world, or even some place in our imagination. Freight Train, Freight Train, running so fast. joining me today and singing with me. I hope you take all the songs that we sing today and sing them with your family, change the words, make them yours, and have a great time singing and reading together. I also hope you'll join us tomorrow morning at 10.30 on smcl.org for Family Storytime with Michelle. She has a lot of great songs and stories too. In the meantime, have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>